Good morning. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the statistics of regression. Um, how do you do statistical analysis with regression, deciding whether a uh, regression line fits data. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about multiple regression and some of the same statistics work that we can do with multiple regression. So just a little bit of background to what we're talking about today. Um, if you remember when we first started talking about regression and linear fitting and empirical modeling, we had the idea of covariance, and if the covariance was large, the data was linear, we said. And then we said, oh, okay, well, yes, but what does it mean for covariance to be large, right? That's not really well-defined, um, right? Large, it can be very kind of variable, and so we created correlation, R, and then R squared, which is what we've been using kind of since. And we said, okay, if R squared is close to 1, since R squared is the percentage of variation that's explained by the regression line, R squared being close to one means that the data is linear, or, or appears to be linear, okay? So when we did that, we replaced the idea of large being vague with close, which inherently seems less vague, close to one seems less vague than large, but in fact, it's just as vague. Uh, because if you think about it, uh, what does close to one mean? Does it mean within 0 0.2, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.01? Right, And so, in fact, the answer depends on how many data points you have in your data set. Um, and so we have to do some more sophisticated statistical modeling. We can't just say, oh, if R squared is above this level, then we're fine. If R squared is below this level, then we're fine. Because the idea is um, the more data points you have, the better that line should fit. Um, the data, right? Because the variation should be spread out along the entire line. And so if it's actually linear, um, the more data points you have, the more of a linear pattern you'll actually start to see. Um, and so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about first two tests. Uh, I'm going to show you how they look in Excel after we talk about them. Um, and then we're going to talk about confidence intervals and show you how to do that in Excel. Um, and then we'll talk about multiple regression and how this applies to all of that. Okay. So, if you recall, when we talked about um, the goodness of fit test, the chi-squared goodness of fit test earlier in the semester, we talked a little bit about hypothesis testing. Um, I want to talk a little bit more formally about it right now, um, and then um, talk about confidence intervals, and then I'll show you how to do how to use Excel to get all of the information you need to actually conduct these. Okay, so. What we're going to talk about first um, is the F test. Turn that for a second. Uh, for linearity. Okay. And so, what the F test is so, this is named after the um, probability distribution that it uses, what's called the F distribution. Um, and so, just like we had the chi-squared distribution for our goodness of fit test, this uses another distribution called the F distribution. What that is, don't worry about it. Um, we're not actually going to dig too deep into it. But basically what the F test does is it tests to see whether our data fits one of two hypotheses. Okay? So in a hypothesis test, there are always, so this is what's called a hypothesis test. There are two hypotheses. Okay, so a hypothesis being something that we're not sure whether it's true or not. Um, one is called the null hypothesis, denoted by H0. And what the null hypothesis is in the F test for linearity is it says that Mi, or let's say M1 equals M2 equals M3. Uh, and so on and so forth, of mn equals zero, okay? And so what these mi are, these are different slopes. So if you remember when we did um, simple regression, regression with one variable, we got y equals mx plus b. And so in that case, there would just be one m, and that would be equal to zero in the null hypothesis. If we do multiple regression, which we saw once in class, um, and we're going to see more of later today, then what you're going to get is you're going to get a line y equals m1 x1 plus m2 x2 up to mn 
then next then plus some intercept b. Okay? And so in that case, what the null hypothesis is saying is that all of these slopes are zero. Okay? And so what this means is that if all of these values are zero, what that means is that there's no linear behavior and that all of the, any kind of variation is just coming from random variation above and below a constant. Okay, and so we'll look at data that looks like that. The alternative hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, which is denoted by H1, is that sum mi is not equal to zero. Okay, and so what that's saying is that there's some linear dependence on at least one of these variables. Okay, so, um, H1 would be that there is some sort of linear dependence. H0 would be that there is no linear dependence, okay? So what we're going to do to figure this out is we're going to calculate a statistic, a test statistic, just like we did before with the chi-square goodness of fit test. We're gonna let Excel do it. So we're not gonna go through the formula or anything. From that test statistic, Excel is going to get what's called a p-value. Okay, and so what a p-value is, um, it's complicated. Again, we'll go through a lot, a lot of the details in Math 313, but for our purposes, this p-value that we're going to get, it's going to be some sort of probability. It's related to the probability that our um, null hypothesis is true. Okay, so if the p-value is small, so a small p-value, implies H1 uh, is true, a large p-value implies uh, H0 is true, okay? And so a small p-value implies that H1 is true, which is to say that um, there is some linear dependence a small a large p-value plus h0 is true so that means no linear dependence okay and so again I'm here again saying small and large but here actually we can say particular values um, and so what we'll generally say is that if the p-value is less than a particular alpha, we say with um, 1 minus alpha percent significance, the data has some linear dependence. And so for this class, and a lot of times in general, we're going to use alpha equals 0 0.05, okay? So if our p-value is less than 0 0.05, we'll say with 95% confidence, 95% significance, um, that there is a some linear dependence. We have some, we're 95% sure that this linear pattern is not coming from random chance is effectively what we're saying, okay? So if the p-value is less than alpha equals 0 0.05, then we say that. If it's larger than 0 0.05, we would say that we're not confident that the data is linear, that it could just be random data, okay? So that's the first um, uh, hypothesis test we're going to use, the F-test. Um, we're also going to look at another one, what's called the T-test for linearity. And it's going to be very, very similar, um, except it's not going to deal with all of our variables at once. So I'm actually just going to erase pieces of this um, and replace them. It's so similar. So in the t-test, we're going to look at each individual variable by itself. 
Okay? So for simple regression, again, one variable regression, these are going to give us the same results. Okay? It's only when you have multiple regressions, what we're going to talk about in a bit, um, that we're going to see that they're different. So in multiple regression, where you might have lots and lots of different slopes, the t-test just looks at a particular slope. And our null hypothesis is that mi is equal to zero. Our alternative hypothesis is that mi is not equal to zero. So again, no linear dependence, some linear dependence. Okay? Same idea with the p-value. Small p-value implies h1 is true. Large p-value implies h0 is true. The only difference, um, and this is because of a kind of feature of the statistics, so for those of you who've seen some statistics before, the F test is a one-tailed test. It's a one-sided probability distribution. The T test is a two-sided probability distribution. And so we have to replace this with alpha over two. So we compare our p-value, rather than comparing it to 0 0.05, we would compare it to 0 0.025, okay? So if the p-value is less than 0 0.025, we say that we have 95% confidence that the data is linear. Okay? So it's just kind of a quirk of the statistics. I don't want to go into all the details of it because uh, this isn't a statistics class. But what we're going to do is we're going to compare to alpha over 2 instead of alpha to get the same confidence. Okay? So just to kind of summarize um, our two hypothesis tests, if the p-value for the f-test is less than alpha, we have 1 minus alpha percent confidence the data depends linearly On at least one variable. And if the p-value for the t-test for a particular variable, the t-test is associated to a particular variable, is less than alpha over 2, we have 1 minus alpha percent confidence the data depends linearly on that particular variable okay and so when we talk about multiple regression we'll talk about how we can use this the f test tells us there is some linear dependence, right? We're confident. And then the t-test can help us kind of zoom in on which variables are having the most effect or are most significant in that um, linear dependence, okay? So the other thing that I want to talk about statistics-wise um, are confidence intervals. So when you do regression in Excel, okay, so when you do a regression table in Excel, so you've got your data, right? Excel will give you values for M and B, right? So it tells you the most likely value for M is this, the most likely value for B is this, right? So it gives you the most likely values for M and B, okay? So for example, you might say you might get for your data y is equal to 2x plus 4. Right? But what Excel also gives you is it gives you what are called 95%, um, or if you specify a different um, percentage, you can get a different one. 95% confidence intervals. For M and B. Okay? And so what that means is it's going to give you a range. So if our equation were y equals 2x plus 4, Excel might say that, um, say, 
one to three is a confidence interval for M. And say two to six is a confidence interval for B. And so what that's saying is they're saying not, we think that the most likely value is two, but there's actually a range of values that it could be. We're 95% confident that the actual linear slope is in the interval one to three. We're 95% confident that the actual slope or the actual y-intercept is in the range two to six, okay? And so it gives you these ranges. Um, and this is another way to kind of look and see if um, you have some sort of linear dependence, okay? Um, because if you, for example, say this were wider, say our confidence interval were um, negative one to five for m, okay? So what this is saying is the slope, we think the slope is two, but it could be anywhere in the range negative one to five. We're 95% confident it's in this range from negative one to five, which means it could be zero, right? And if the slope is zero, then there is no linear relationship. Our data is just kind of randomly distributed, okay? And so in this case, if you've got something like this, you'll see if zero is in your confidence interval for your slope, then your t-test or your F tests are going to tell you that there's not a linear relationship um, or that we're not 95% confident that there's a linear relationship, right? Because in the 95% confidence interval, zero could be in that range, okay? And so you can say we think the line is y equals 2x plus 4, but this slope could range anywhere from negative 1 to 5. This y-intercept could range anywhere from 2 to 6. And so when you see graphs, um, like for example, if you see any kind of prediction data, um, a lot of times you'll see a graph of data, right? And then they'll have the predicted graph that continues going. But on either side of that predicted graph, they might have like a shaded region, right? Have you seen graphs like this before? I could, I, um, I'll find one and post it with this lecture so you can see a graph like this. What this is, is this is a projection of what the data is going to look like, but then with some sort of confidence interval on it. What they're saying is that we're 95% sure that the actual curve will be somewhere in here. And that comes from these confidence interval ranges. Okay? So, um, I'll post a, a graph like that in the Excel spreadsheet that I show you in the next um, segment.